Hey, did you know how much science is behind special effects? Well, you're gonna find out today. It's Dr. D from Neighborhood Science. So, do you have any clue or a guess as to what today's science lesson is going to be about? I'll give you a hint. Do you think this is glass or not? <laughs> well, it's not. And that's what we're going to learn about. So, have you ever left a movie theater and saw a movie and you were just amazed with the special effects that they did? Well, these people who make these special effects are called coordinators, and they use a lot of chemistry in order to create these special effects, from explosions to pyrotechnics, and even making snow when it's not really snow. There are also makeup artists who use a special flexible plastics to make masks and costumes that adhere to the skin where it actually looks like it's the actor's actual skin. So today we're gonna to be doing two awesome labs. One of them is going to be making snow and the second one is going to be making this special kind of glass called sugar glass. So, are you ready? Lights, camera, action! They say, I'll get too big. I'll get too big. They say, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. They say, I'll get too strong. I'll get too strong. They say, it's a cult. They say, it's a cult. They say, I'll get too strong. They say, 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 they must not cross fit. We are cross fit. Okay, so now we're going to do our special effects of making snow. But first, let's hear the safety tips from Millie. Thanks, Dr. D. I'm Millie. Here's my safety tips. Always work with an adult. Read and follow all directions for the activity. Read all warning labels on all materials being used. Wear eye protection. Follow safety warnings or precautions, such as wearing gloves or tying back long hair. Use all materials carefully. Follow the directions given. Be sure to clean up and dispose of materials properly when you're finished with an activity. Wash your hands well after every activity. Never eat or drink while conducting an experiment and be careful to keep all the materials away from your mouth, nose, and eyes. And last but not least, never experiment on your own. Back to you, Dr. D. Okay, now we're gonna be using a chemical called sodium polyacrylate. That's a huge word, but it's a polymer, right? And a polymer just means this long link of chains of repeating monomers. So it's the same thing repeating itself over and over again. But what makes polymers so awesome, especially sodium polyacrylate, is that it absorbs so much water and it traps it in between the linkage. So what happens with a polymer is that when it adds water, it tangles up. And then when it tangles up in between these, there are these pockets and it's within these pockets that it traps the water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same amount of sodium polyacrylate in each cup, but we're gonna add different amounts of water so we can see what happens to the consistency of the water so that if you're a special effects person, you can decide if you want fluffy snow or if you want slushy snow. So let's begin. 
So we're gonna start with sodium polyacrylate, which is also found in diapers, and that's what makes diapers so super absorbent, right? So we're gonna do about a tablespoon of sodium polyacrylate in every one. Dr. D actually purchased this one, and you can purchase it, but you can also cut open a diaper and pull it out of there too. Not only is sodium polyacrylate found in diapers, it's also found in the diapers inside the spacesuits that the astronauts wear. That's how they can do long moonwalks or walking in space or time out in space is because they also have sodium polyacrylate inside their spacesuits. So we're gonna put a tablespoon of poly sodium polyacrylate into each cup. The same amount into each cup. And it's safe to touch, but we don't put it in our mouths, in our eyes, or in its nose. We don't do any of that. So you want an adult, just like Millie said, you want an adult with you when you do this. So sodium polyacrylate, it's just a crystally colored powder like this. That's all it is. But what it can do is absolutely amazing. So now for our first one, we're gonna add a teaspoon of water. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of water here. I'm gonna add four teaspoons here. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna add a whole tablespoon of water here. One tablespoon and four tablespoons in our last one. Remember, it's the same amount of sodium polyacrylate. And then we're going to mix them. So we're gonna mix it around. And you're gonna see what happens by mixing it around. You see that? It gets fluffy, just like snow. This is so exciting, okay? So now I added the one teaspoon here, and this is what it looks like. This is how you can make fluffy snow. So let's see what happens with the consistency as we add more water. So I'm gonna add this one. And it reacts very quickly. And remember, it just absorbs the water and absorbs the water, no matter how much you give it, up to 300 times its weight. So this one here is also fluffy, but it's a little moister than the first one. And you can pack it also, which is pretty awesome, just like snow. And then we're gonna go to the third one. This one was one tablespoon of water. And if you're noticing, it's also more each time. Because the more you add, the more it's going to add. The bigger it's going to get and the fluffier that it's going to get. See, it's a lot more than the last one. And this is its consistency as well, pretty fluffy, but you can still pack it. And then our last one, where we added four tablespoons of water, it's a little different. You notice? It's a little wetter. It's more like slush. And then we mix it around. And it's not as white and fluffy. It's a little slushier. And then that's what this one looks like. And it doesn't come out as easy and it's heavier. So as you can see, it's not as fluffy. It's a little more weighted. It's a little heavier in my hand but it's a different type of snow. So by adding the, the amount of, changing the amount of water changes the fluffiness of the sodium polyacrylate, okay? So if they want fluffy snow, they know what they need to do. But in the movies, they don't use sodium polyacrylate. They use something called hexylene glycol. And what that does is it does the same thing, but it goes through this huge machine where they can just blow out the snow like you see 
um, when you go skiing on the mountains. So that is how they make snow in special effects. Okay, so now we're gonna make the sugar glass. So now the next time you go when you look at the movies, you'll know what's happening when the actors are jumping through the windows because it's not a real window, it's sugar. Number one, the reason that movies don't use real glass is number one, it's very dangerous, right? And number two, it's also because of the fact that it's very expensive. So they use sugar glass. So think about that the next time you see an actor being thrown from a window. So let's talk about the ingredients that we're going to need to make this. We're gonna need one and three quarter cups of sugar. We're going to need an eighth teaspoon of cream of tartar. We're gonna need one half cup of light corn syrup and one cup of water. Then you're going to need your measuring cups of course your candy thermometer. And the reason you use a candy thermometer is because it can handle the temperatures that we're gonna have to boil this to. A pot, spoon, and of course our measuring teaspoon. Okay, so let's begin. Now, what's happening is when we use regular table sugar, we mix in our table sugar, we mix in our half a cup of our light syrup, now I'm using a quarter cup, so this is my math question to you. If I have only have a quarter cup, how do I make a half cup? I make a half cup by using two quarter cups, because a quarter plus a quarter is two quarters, which is a half. So I'm going to add this. And what you have to realize that's happening, the, the um, very interesting science that's happening with this, is the fact that sugar is a very large molecule called sucrose. And what we need to do is we need to break the sucrose down into two smaller sugars called fructose and glucose. And once they're broken down, we won't be able to see them anymore, but you know that they exist. So now I'm gonna do a cup of water. So I'm gonna do four one quarters since I already started with this. And when you look at your solution, once you see it and you mix it around, you're gonna notice that you can still see the sugar on the bottom. And the reason that you can still see the sugar on the bottom is because this is, this is what's called a saturated solution. And what saturated means is that the water molecules can't absorb any more of the sucrose. It can't absorb any more of it, right? So that what happens is everything else just settles to the bottom. That's when it's saturated. What's all, what you also need to understand in the chemistry behind the sugar is that when you add sugar to your drinks, if you notice you can't see the sugar anymore, but you can taste it, that's because this is called a physical change, right? Because the sugar doesn't change form, it remains sugar, you just don't see it. So we have a saturated solution here, and what we need to do in order to make the sugar glass is we have to get that saturated sugar to dissolve. And the only way you do that is you have to heat this to it's very, very hot. This is why one of Mealy's instructions were have a parent do this part. The burns are very, very serious, okay? And you also wanna use an oven mitt on your hand, okay? So we have to heat this to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna be hotter than boiling water. So we wanna make sure we understand that. So as you're stirring it, and as it's heating up, you're gonna notice the consistency is going to change. As the consistency changes of the solution, it's letting you know that more water has boiled off and then you're gonna just be boiling the sugar. That's what makes candy sweet. It's this extra boiling phase. And also, just so you know, at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, that's how you make toffee, and that's how lollipops and other hard candies are made, that the candy maker has to boil it to 300 degrees, and that's how you get this consistency. Now, what you can also do, once everything boils, 
and it hits 300 degrees and you pour it on the pan, you can now add food coloring and change the color of the glass. So Dr. D was messing with some of the food coloring and that's how I made it this pretty yellow color. So when you're making your glass, if you add food coloring, you can make some amazing colors and remember, it's just candy. So that's how we make fake glass, also called sugar glass, that they use behind the scenes in movies. Wow, wasn't that exciting? Now you know how to make your own snow. So I hope that you learned how many careers there are in science. STEM has a place for every one of you. So be that beautician, that barber, that carpenter, that artsy person. STEM has a place for you too. The only limits are the ones you place on yourself. Happy sciencing, Dr. D.